Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge, and let's talk horror. Now, today I am joined by the amazing Danny Villanueva Jr. Danny, how you doing, man? I'm doing well. Really happy to be here. Oh, dude, I'm so excited to have you. Um, you are a writer and a director. A little bit about you before we actually get into the reason why we're here. Um, you've directed and written short film after short film, which is awesome. I know the struggle when it comes to writing short films and how hard it can be. People think that because it's, you know, a shorter film that it doesn't take as much as a full length feature, which is just 100% untrue. It takes just as much time and effort to make a short film. But now I Dream of Psychopom, which is out now. What can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so this is my debut feature-length film. And what it, it's about psychopomps. A lot of people are, aren't really familiar with the term, but what they are are soul guides. And, and they've been present in many different cultures throughout history. They help spirits that are stuck on Earth transition into the afterlife. So Greek mythology had Hermes, ancient Egypt, Anubis, uh, and then there's uh, the Grim Reaper figure we're all familiar with. And uh, what this is, an an is an anthology. So there's different kinds of psychopomps, but there is, um, all of them are like grounded in, in certain ways. You're not getting, we're not getting too fantastical. Um, mm -hmm. The stories are about characters having like real life issues that just happen to be in a world where the supernatural is alive. Okay. And I obviously don't want to give away any spoilers. Um, can you tell people where this is going to be streaming at? Yeah, so we premiered on the Terror Films channel last uh, Friday. And then this Friday, it's going to be available on digital and VOD platforms. So Amazon, Google Play, iTunes, and a few other platforms. Well, the good thing is, guys, you don't have to go searching for it because I have those links right down here in the description. So make sure that you're checking this out. And a, a big thing about this that I really want to talk about, we're not going to give any spoilers away here, guys, because I want you to be able to check this out for yourselves. But what inspired you to create this film? Well, there's when I, I it's, it's hard for me to kind of like find an exact moment where I, it just sparked, you know, but when I start to think back on it, um, I look at like just the figure of the Grim Reaper, all, I've always been fascinated with. And I thought, how can I take this character and make a, a story that's more reality grounded? And then doing research, I came across shamans and how they practice cycle pumping. And that's through meditation. They go into this alternate state of consciousness and they find spirits that are stuck on earth. And then they have conversations with them to help them come to terms with death and then help them transition so I thought, you know, this, this way is kind of a good, good approach. Um, and then on a deeper, more personal level, I felt that, so I hadn't experienced uh, a close death of a loved one. Uh, and I was kind of afraid of that. I was raised by my grandparents uh, and I knew that their time it would be a lot shorter than if I was raised by my, you know, my biological parents. So I felt I need to like prepare for that to happen sooner. And yeah. I started to just try to teach myself about death, like what it really is. And during this filming process, I interviewed funeral directors and grieving families to try to understand it uh, better. And then once we finished filming, got into post, my grandmother, who was my my mother, who is biologically my grandmother, had developed stage four lung cancer, uh, and I was her primary caregiver. And within three months, she passed away. So in one room, I'm taking care of her. In the other room, I'm editing this film. And this film, it centers around someone who's dealing with a loss. He's trying to gr grieve his uh, deceased wife. So I kind of felt like I was almost following his journey, and it to me, it, it felt like it taught me a lot, even though I wrote that segment. And uh, I don't know, it was like watching it again. It took on a whole different kind of meaning in the editing room. And I do believe that it, it helped me through that grieving process. Mm -hmm. And it, it's amazing how us as human beings, we can be so different and we can grieve the exact same because my mother at the age of 51 just didn't wake up. 
and we don't know really what happened. And um, the way I dealt with it was I created a short film, Home is Where the Haunt is, uh, you know, a short horror film about the death of my mother. And um, it's amazing how the grieving process, like I said, we can be entirely different people, but we're connected in these ways that we grieve. And I'm so sorry for your loss. I know that it's never easy to lose your mother, the one constant, whether it's your grandmother or your mother, um, biologically or not, she's the one that's been there your whole life. And I'm sorry, you know, I know that nothing can take that pain away. So um, I, I do respect and admire the fact that you were able to create a film with these deeper meanings of death and what comes next. And I really hope that you find your own type of peace through the film with losing someone so close to you, Danny. I, like I said, I know it's not easy and um, you know, much love and respect. Um, so with, I dream of psychopop, we, like I said, we got that streaming now and you guys can check that out, but I know NDAs exist. So I know it's hard to talk about everything we want to talk about, but do you have anything coming up down the pipeline that you can let us know about? Yeah, so I'm actually in pre-production for my next feature. It's titled What Happened to Dorothy Bell. Um, can't really say much about it, but we are running a crowdfunding campaign campaign that's now live on Indiegogo. So you can search okay. for that title um, and you can find a synopsis and a little bit about what to expect. Uh, just a bare minimum to kind of tease what, what we're doing. Okay. Well, I mean, and the good thing again, you guys do not have to go search for that because I have that link down here in the description. So if you have the ability, um, don't, you know, take it over the edge with yourself. But if you have that ability to help make this art be made, I have the link right down here to be able to help that. So uh, Danny, we know what you got going on in the future and we know what you're doing right now, but here for a second, my friend, I do want to go back to the past and talk about how horror started for you and how it got going for you. Your first horror movie and Danny, your first horror movie was, Child's Play 2. <laughs> Dude, and I, I've said this a thousand times. Um, I believe in my heart strongly that Child's Play is my favorite horror franchise of all time. Um, I think that just from top to bottom, it's super solid. It's fun to watch. And it's pretty consistent from you know beginning to end. Um, do you remember about how old you were the first time you had seen it, Danny? I had to be like five or younger. Um, and I remember vividly this moment where it was towards the end of the film, they're in the good guy doll factory and Chucky has got Andy on the floor and he's starting to do the chant. Um, and then we see the clouds fill the frame, the storm is coming. And I believe that night, unless I was just in my head, that there was actual storm outside of my house. And I was convinced that because this film was playing and because Chucky's voice was coming out of the speakers, that this chant was actually summoning this, you know. No, and oh I was scared. I was oh, like about to run up to the TV and shut it off because I thought like we were doing something we shouldn't, we were, you know, messing with the wrong thing. <laughs> that witchcraft, man. Dude, and yeah. it, it's amazing how us as kids can be so affected by these things that are happening. Um, and especially something like child's play, you know, us as young boys, I can't speak for you, but when I was a young boy, I played with action figures, you know, a lot of toys and stuff like that. And so to watch a movie like child's play, where the thing that I get my reprieve from life with my action figures come to life and be killer really scared the hell out of me. So um, do you remember which scene from child's play it was that really affected you the most? It was probably that one just yeah. because of the, the experience that I had and the feeling that it, it was happening. Um, but I remember, like, I started to look at my dolls differently. I had this Three Stooges curly doll that I just mm -hmm. always kept with me. And I remember having this nightmare where I woke up and I looked over and the curly doll was sleeping next to me and it woke up and looked at me. And then I woke up from that dream and I turned around, it was laying in the exact same position. And then it woke up again and looked oh. at me. I had two dreams in one. And finally I woke up and it was, it was real life and it was laying there. 
and I just never had a dream like that where it was like two dreams. Like I woke, it was like a scene out of Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, it was man. incredible. And those little moments just, it just created like this love for me of the living doll subgenre of horror. Mm-hmm. And then around the same time, goosebumps popped up, you know, slappy. And it's just, I still to this day, I just have this deep love uh, for creepy dolls. I think that it's something we all that watch child's play as a kid. Like you said, I love that, you know, the ventriloquist doll slappy from goosebumps. Another one that scared the hell out of all of us as a kid. Um, I love the fact that these could be so coordinated with each other. Um, Cause both of those, just like you, both of those scared the hell out of me when I was a kid. And I think, like I said, it's because you, we, as young boys, young ladies too, you know, they had action figures and Barbies. I'm not trying to be, Oh, only boys played with GI Joes, you know, but um, we all had these toys that we played with and Chucky could really affect us in that way. Um, I think the child's play too, where this movie is so special. This is the movie where Chucky starts to develop a personality where in one, he's just a killer doll. But in this one, you have, you know, scary moments like him killing the teacher in the classroom. You know, you've been very naughty, Mrs. Kettlewell, you know, and you see him beating her with that yardstick and killing her. Or when the stepdad falls and Chucky delivers the infamous line. How's it hanging, Phil? Uh, 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 and then he lets him fall. <laughs> you know, like, this is where Chucky really gains his personality in, as opposed to Child's Play, where he's just this killer doll. Um, we know which scene affected you the most, but what would you say your favorite scene from Child's Play 2 was? Uh, let me think about that. I would say when he gets the knife and puts a knife in his hand. Um, oh, in the factory? Yeah, and he's got the bloody nose. And it, it just, for me, it like created like a new look for him. And that, and I always loved that look. I loved the, the, this uh, doll from Child's Play 2. I, I liked it more than the first one it just Mm -hmm. felt a little more human um and just those little angry faces it it had chucky had um yeah that was just that whole scene was was intense and uh something that i i i really liked about this one and compared to the first was that we've we've established the rules uh we know like the tropes and now it's just fun you know they're able to play with play with it more and it's just pure suspense you know from the beginning we know we know kind of what to expect and then they're just playing with us from from then on right yeah you don't have to lay any background you don't have to lay any you know groundwork this is just zero to 60 right from the very beginning of the film um now child's play two obviously with it being part two is part of a franchise and like i said off the top one of my favorite franchises of all time but what would you say your favorite film in the Child's Play franchise is? I, I would say number two, to be honest. I know that it, it, a lot of it has to do with that first experience. But overall, when I was, you know, when I was mature enough in my teenage years and when I hadn't seen them in such such a long time, I revisited all of them. And yeah, number two, the first three are just like my thing because Mm -hmm. it was before we started to get like too too fun you know and i i was creeped out by chucky like a lot of people first saw it later in life when and then this kind of subgenre of creepy dolls was a a little bit Mm -hmm. uh played you know so people weren't really as affected by it um as you know someone who was young at that age and grew up with that so yeah when it's like pure horror with a little bit of that fun that's where the sweet spot is for me um but i still love everything else i was watching the new series uh episode by episode every week i couldn't wait um so yeah i've been keeping up to date with it all and i'm looking forward to season two that's gonna be fun dude it's gonna be so good um, yeah. 
And I agree with you. Child's Play 3 is always my favorite. And I get a lot of shit for that. But I just, I love that one. I just think that one's the most fun. And growing up, maybe it's because that's the first one I've seen in this franchise. So that's the one that I identify with the most. Maybe that's why I love it so much. Um, but as horror fans, we do gravitate to the kills. You know, we love the kills in a film. The gorier, the better sometimes. Or sometimes subtlety is the way to go. Um, in Child's Play 2, which kill would you say is, I hate saying favorite because that's super dark, but which kill stuck with you the most from Child's Play 2? I really like the doll eyes going into the factory worker. <laughs> that was just great. And I love how, it just the, the way that scare was built, how he was climbing up there, you're already like, man, what is this guy doing? He does He's not following the rules. And then he turns to look and there's Chucky and <laughs> knocks him down. Oh man, just the thought and the just, oh, it's beautiful. Hands down, <laughs> my favorite kill in the whole franchise is that <laughs> kill right there. It's so good. Love it so much, man. Um, so obviously Child's Play 2, part of it's a sequel and Child's Play has had a remake. Right now in Hollywood, remakes, requels, sequels, it's kind of all the rage. Um, did you watch Child's Play 2019, the remake? And if so, what were your thoughts on that? You know, surprisingly, I didn't. Um, I there's something about it I just couldn't. I don't know. I I just, I just felt like I was doing something wrong when I was watching it. But I know that I've heard a lot of people who do appreciate it a lot for what it is. Like if they can separate themselves from the original franchise, so I I do need to to watch it. I just, I have been kind of slacking and, you know, there was an initial hesitation, uh, like, you know, most of us probably had, you know, I get it, dude. I did. My wife and son went and seen it in the theater and I wouldn't go. I was like, no, they're going to ruin this franchise. And then I ended up watching it and I love it. I think like, um, oh, wow. my biggest complaint with it. And I've said this since the beginning, and I'm sorry for repeat viewers that have heard me talk about this before. I wish that they would not have called it child's play. I wish they would have called it buddy doll from the world of child's play. That way they could have separated themselves from who Chucky was. And they could have, you know, it could have been a completely different film. I feel like if they would just tweak the name that much, um, because I love the fact that they didn't try to redo Chucky, you know, Brad Dourif is Chucky. That's already done. You can't do that. So I love what the, the idea that they did. They took the original idea of an evil doll and they made it their own. I love and I appreciate that. But it really, like you said, I feel bastardized that they used the name Chucky for this doll. Um, there's only one Chucky and that's Brad Dura. Yeah. Um, if, if they had just called this the buddy doll from the world. And here's where I, they wrote themselves in a corner anyway, because that studio does not own the rights to the name Child's Play 2. So if this was successful... They couldn't have made a sequel called Child's Play 2 anyway. So they could have done Buddy Bear from the world of Child's Play as a sequel, you know? So, I mean, like, they could have done so many different things. If they just tweaked the name that much, it could have made that much of a difference. So, um, Danny, we talked about I, I Dream of Psychopomp, which is your first full-length feature, which is, again, congratulations, man. You're living Thank the dream. You. You're doing something Thank that you. all of us hope to be able to do one day. We talk about Child's Play 2, which was the first horror movie that you ever watched that got you started in the genre. But now, man, I want to throw a little bit of a curveball here at you for a second, Danny. Uh, my little buddy Ghostface is here, and he has a question for you. What's your favorite scary movie, Danny? What is your Ooh. favorite horror movie of all okay. time? All right. Uh, I would have to say The Shining. Uh, the, more and more, the more and more I watch it, the more I find something new in it, and now that I feel like I have a lot more of a technical knowledge of filmmaking, I appreciate it so much more. This was another film that I did see when I was very young um, and it was scary, but there's so much that I wasn't really understanding at that age. Um, and now that I, I, I turn it on, I just appreciate so much of it. The performances, the, the atmosphere is just, this is something that I, I strive for. Like, uh, it's just, yeah, I could watch it over and over. And it's essentially a three and a half person cast because you get Dick Halloran here and there and you get, you know, the monsters spotted here and there. But, you know, those three completely carry this whole movie. And 
it is such a very intense representation of mental health and alcoholism mixed with horror. Like I think the shining is a movie for the ages. I think that it's, it, it's a perfect movie. It, it's so yeah, good. Like... It is so, <laughs> so good. So man, Danny, I've had an amazing time hanging out with you talking about your fur full length feature, talking about all the ways that horror got influenced for you and how it got started for you. But before I let you go, what we do is we always end this with the same question. We're going to go back to Child's Play 2, Danny, and we're going to rank this on a skull count. Now, we're not judging this movie on acting, production, score, anything like that. We're judging Child's Play 2 strictly on how much it affected you on first viewing. So zero skulls being not effective, five being extremely effective. You can use half and quarter skulls anywhere in the middle. Uh, Danny, what would your ranking of Child's Play 2 be? I would for sure say a five. And that's because it just sparked my love for horror. And that was till now. I'm I'm 33 years old. When I seen the film, I had to have been under five years old. So it, it's such a big part of who I am that I have to give it a five. Dude, and I get it. Like I, I don't think that there's a perfect movie that's ever been made, like strictly from top to bottom, absolutely perfect. But there are movies that affected me so much I could give them five. You know what I mean? Like House from 1986, Nightmare on Elm Street, Child's Play 3. These are movies that, like I said, as a 36-year-old man, I still think about these movies once a day and what they mean to me. I mean, I buy mm -hmm. shirts based on these movies. So, like, I totally understand where you're coming from there. Well, guys, we are at the end of the third act. The credits are about to roll. Curtain's about to drop. But before that happens... There's some social media links down here. You can follow Danny to stay up to date on everything that he has coming up in the future, as well as you can check out I Dream of Psychopop, and you can help with the Kickstarter Indiegogo for his next full-length feature film. So there's all these amazing things that you can help to be a part of right down here in the description. So uh, Danny, please don't go anywhere. I got a couple more questions for you. Everybody else, as always, keep talking horror, stay what you are, and we'll see you guys soon.